Hi guys, today's video is going to be about setting up my king snakes with a with new setup for their enclosures. I felt that their enclosures, while pretty good, needed some work, um, mainly because I wanted there to be more enrichment. I felt like that was lacking mainly. So I decided to go out and forage for some supplies. And so I'm also going to be discussing how to safely forage for supplies and make sure that it has no pesticides or parasites in it that could affect your reptiles. So let's get into it. So I decided to walk around the back uh, area of my apartments and I was collecting leaves and sticks that I thought would work really great for it. Um, and I even came across this really cool field that I hadn't been to before. Um, and while I was out there, I found some native passion fruits. Um, I didn't even know they grew in North Carolina. And then I also found this really cool salamander. I genuinely have no idea what species it is though. For chocolate puddings enclosure, I decided to add in some aspen wood bedding and the eco earth coconut fiber bedding. The reason is that the coconut fiber will help with increasing the humidity and the aspen bedding will help keep the shape when she decides to make caves or any kind of tunnels. I then added in some sphagnum moss from Galapagos and the other one I believe was a Magitarium which is the Petco brand and I mixed that in just so that we could create more of a stability as well as add a bit of texture and the moss will overall help with humidity levels as well. King snakes don't need to have that super high of a humidity but it will be helpful for when she starts to shed. So what I'm adding now is a tree stump hide that she had from her last enclosure. I'm using this one just because it will also have some of her smell on it, which should make her feel a lot safer. What I'm doing here is I'm lowering the dirt levels so that way the hide itself is a little bit closer to the heat mat and that way she can stay a little bit warmer if she wants to. I'm also adding a water dish here. The water dish is not my favorite. I would honestly recommend going with something slightly larger so that way your snake has the ability to soak their whole body or at least a good majority of it. The next thing I added was the leaves that I collected from outside and the way that I made them safe was pouring boiling water over them as I placed them in a bowl. That way it killed any pathogens or parasites that could have collected. So the next thing I added was branches for climbing. The big branch I got from Petco and then all the little branches that I added in there were ones that I got from outside and I covered them with boiling water to kill off any pathogens or parasites. The next thing I started adding was the last of the reindeer moss that I have. I just really like the look of it and I like that it's soft so it gives something for the snake to interact with that's very different from everything else in the environment. Then I started to add the rest of the leaves that I had collected just so that way the snake had more cover and that way it kind of made it more like a bottom of the forest floor kind of look. And then it was time to add chocolate pudding. Chocolate pudding is an Eastern king snake, um, still a baby, probably I think only a few months old they said. I just got her at the recent reptile show in Charlotte from Carter's Reptiles. And then it was time to move on to candy corns enclosure. For candy corns, I did the same a substrate mixture of aspen and coconut fiber, but I didn't add moss this time. Then I added in a, a stacked wood structure that Candy Corn had in his last enclosure and a cork round by Zoomed. Then I started to add in his skull hide that he had from his last enclosure just to give him something that he's used to and he really seemed to love it. And then I added in all the leaf litter that I had collected and this stick was one of the sticks that I also collected and um, boiled for safety. And of course, as always, I had to finish it off with some reindeer moss. I just can't help myself, I love it. And then it was time to add candy corn. Candy corn is a Nuevo Leon king snake. Compared to chocolate pudding, he has been a little bit more difficult, at least when it comes to feeding, um, but he is extremely handleable. I have never had a problem with him biting me or being aggressive, and now he is a fantastic eater. And while they're enjoying their new setup, here's some things I learned about king snakes that I didn't know. When it comes to king snakes, um, one of the hardest things that I know people have, depending on the species of course, is getting them to eat. The best way that I found to have my picky Nuevo Leon eat was by covering the frozen pinky mouse in tuna juice from a tuna can. Um, that's probably one of the better ways to do it, but you can also always do it by scenting it with possibly another king snake or even a lizard. 
One thing I definitely recommend is if you do go to handle your king snakes, make sure that you wash your hands in between. And if you have any other snakes, make sure you wash your hands before you handle your king snake. Not only will this cut down on disease and parasites, but king snakes are cannibalistic and will attempt to eat snakes. So there's a good chance you might get bitten if you smell like a snake. When it comes to offering enrichment, I definitely recommend giving them some kind of climbing. The main reason is that even though they are burrowers, they do like interacting with their environment, and my king snakes have certainly enjoyed having something to climb on. Even though the escape risk is very low when it comes to king snakes, it is still possible, so I definitely recommend having some type of screen lid that is either a lock-in or you have something that keeps it uh, like on there. Otherwise, you might run into an issue of a snake going missing. As you can see from my initial setups, they were just not enough. I definitely recommend providing what I've provided now, even though I would still change things about it. But overall, their initial setups were definitely more of a quarantine kind of setup, and I'm glad I changed it. All right, and that is how to properly set up a much more enriching enclosure while using supplies from outside. Of course, you can always buy from your local pet store if you wanna be on the safe side or even a garden store. You just wanna make sure it doesn't contain any kind of pesticides or paints that could hurt your animal if you do go with that option. But overall, that is the best way to make sure that you have done it safely as well as just give them something a little bit different. It will have different kinds of smells on it as well as it will have um, different textures that can be more inviting for them. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or interested in any other kinds of information and want to leave a comment about any new videos that you wanna see me make, um, let me know.